When was the first time you saw the film in its entirety with a large audience? And what was your reaction to their reaction? Yeah, well, I saw it early, early on in a cut and I gave Todd some notes. And, uh, and then I don't think I saw it for like another two months. Well, Todd took those notes and all the rest of the notes from all the times and just really fine tuned the movie. And it was a screening for Warner Brothers for like their worldwide distribution. I thought it was just a screening he was going to have for a couple people. Todd's like, you want to see the movie? It's basically in its cut where I think it's near, nearly final cut, if not close. Uh, and I was like, yeah, sure. And then when I went, I went, oh, I didn't realize it was like going to be 400 people here. <laughs> And like not a test audience, but like actually the Warner Brothers distribution arm of like worldwide. And uh, I was blown away. I literally, I, I, when the movie ended, I went, it's a freaking masterpiece. Like, and that wasn't just me, like, because I was a part of it. In fact, I'm way harder on the movies I'm a part of and can rarely separate myself in a real objective way to like watch it and get lost in it. But I remember when he does the stuff at the end and he's on top of the police car and it just felt so powerful and so operatic that I just remember thinking, God, this is even better than I thought it would be. And I thought it would be pretty good. And I think helping you know, the audience there and just really sensing the size and the scope of the movie on that screen at Warner Brothers that we watched on is a really big screen. So seeing the power of that, having just witnessed it now on an editing monitors that were quite small, um, yeah, I was I was actually quite blown away. And then I thought, oh, geez, this thing could really be a hit. Yeah. Were there reactions or not? not uh, Amazingly, here's the thing. The funny part about that was I was like, because I turned to my wife who was there and I said, like halfway through or something, I'm like, is this working for you? Because unlike a comedy where people are laughing, you really know. Like Hangover, I remember the first time I saw it with an audience, you were like, oh, boy this thing is actually could be a really big hit because it was like raucous and you could feel it. In here, I, anyway, I turned to her and I said, is this working for you? And she goes, it's amazing. I'm like loving it. I go, all right, good, because I'm feeling the same way. You could sense the audience. You could feel their engagement. You know, you know, you know when audiences are fidgeting. There's a lot of ta you know, like things, signs that you can tell with an audience to see if it's working, particularly on a movie that you're not, te you're not looking for laughs, but you're looking for engagement. Sometimes that's hard to see. But when the movie ended, I was expecting, because also it was like Warner Brothers and their distribution arm, for there to be just like spontaneous clapping. Like I was even expecting like a standing ovation. <laughs> and like there was none of that. And I went, that is so weird. And Todd goes, no, no, trust me. I've, I've watched this with just smaller audiences too. They never, they're usually just sit stunned. <laughs> And I went, right, right, right. Because then I remember it took like a day in which I could finally digest it. And then starting talking to people, I recognized that they, the, the common experience of the movie is that not one of like clapping, but one of like, like digesting what they've just seen and being a little bit just frozen. And then a day later going, oh my God, that movie was this, or this movie really worked for me. And, so we had like a whole reception afterwards with like distribution people and from those people throughout the throughout that afterwards uh, people would go oh my god this movie is amazing so I went oh good it was working for everyone but it didn't have that natural thing that happens sometimes at the end of a movie where there's like a sense of like applause you know and all that kind of stuff so it was an interesting experience in that regard but clearly it worked because you know they were really high on it and all that stuff so. Yeah. Great. Yeah, you're right. It, it does take a while. I mean, I, I was still thinking about it, I think, two nights later. Yeah, and I've so, gotten yeah. letters from mm -hmm. friends and emails and stuff. They're, they're, they say that. They go, yeah, I just needed a day or two, but now I recognize like it. And then, and this is, you don't get to a billion dollars without people going more than once, generally speaking. There have been a lot of people I know, you know, and people I don't think generally go to see movies more than once who have gone more than once to then have a to like now know what the experience was because I think it was it was a different I think it was different than anyone expected. Certainly, the trailer gave clues as to the tone of the movie, but I think I think one of the surprises was what the movie wasn't for the fans. And what's nice is that that was cool. They were cool with that. You know, sometimes I mean I see even now with just this new Star Wars movie, fans are just they have such 
a relationship with these movies. And, and, you know, and so the people that were mad at Ryan Johnson are happy of what they made changes in the new version. But the people that love the Ryan Johnson version are mad about what J.J. Abrams did. Like, you can't please everyone. So you, but you recognize that like they have a relationship with these characters in these movies. So you have to be aware that they're part of the experience. And so I think even if you want to stand outside of that, you still have to have some interest into what their experience is with the movie. And I think, I think what's interesting is that the, the, I think a lot of the fans in, the, in that universe were happy that it was so different and different and unexpected, darker. Or, like, you know, they weren't as upset over the things that we thought they might be. There's not enough action. It's not a comic book movie. It doesn't have this. It doesn't have that. All the things that may be in the back of your head, you're going, will the movie feel too small? Will the movie not, you know, service this sort of crowd that is has an expectation of what a Joker movie would be? Were all the things that I think people really embraced. And, and I think it's great for the movie industry at large that a movie that you know isn't all those things can still make a billion dollars. Sure. On a lighter note, I think there's like an old Saturday Night Live skit with William Shatner where he like addresses yes. a crowd of Trekkies. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He just course. finally breaks down and exactly. says, "People, it was a TV show, you know, but that it, it encompasses this. This it, it meant so much. That's right. That's to right. People. We we have relationships with movies are so powerful and they're so good at, at moving you emotionally and. And when they're done well, they really, you know, you have a connection with them. And so, and then they become even more powerful as time goes by and, and you know, and so, listen, I, I think you, you have to make movies aware of your audience, but not for your audience, right? But I think you have to also be aware of that they, that they exist and that they're, they're, they're part of the experience, you know? But you hope that you don't necessarily cater everything to them because as a filmmaker your job is to tell this story and uh and hope that if you tell it with you know a very specific point of view that it will connect with audiences at large were you aware that so many people that aren't necessarily into the comic book genre would love the film i was my hope because i came at it from a person who uh is not a huge comic book fan so my hope is like, well, my parents would see it. Like they wouldn't necessarily go see, you know, Ant Man, but you know, because they would think of it as a comic book movie. But hopefully, they would go see this and enjoy it, because they wouldn't. It wouldn't uh, simply exist under that heading, you know, and would exist on its own. So that was the hope. And obviously, you know, we can see that, that like what it is. I thought as we were making it. For sure. I think as we were making it, I was I was for sure going, that audience that doesn't like comic book movies will like this. But now we gotta make sure we're not, you know, that the audience that loves them won't feel like, what the hell is this? But but I, I sort of knew that what we were making would service both because I thought, well, first we're making a good movie, but I think in a weird way, um, we're making a movie that's very much like a comic book movie in the truest sense, in the way that like kids when they're 10 years old would have this like very personal experience with the actual comic book, right? Where it's just images on a piece of paper with writing that you have to then bring your own imagination into the sort of deep emotion of it and just like a novel would. And I thought like, oh, you know, but it's a picture novel, right? So. Literally, it's like if we can create these engaging images and we and that in a way we're, we're going to create something that may be a very much a comic book movie or certainly a movie that feels like a graphic novel. So, you know. And, and giving credit to your, I think it was sociology teacher, you mentioned that he said that yeah. movies are a product of our decade or you know, the, you know, the, I'm, I'm butchering what he said. But No, I, <laughs> when it, I wasn't a film major in college. I was an economics major, but I, I got into film late and then started taking some classes. And because I was an economics major, I was always interested in sort of cause and effect of things. So he was a sociology and a film professor. He did both. And it was, uh, it was a basically the, the construct of the class was every movie can be seen as a product of the time in which it was made. Right? And in that class, we literally looked at the way Three Amigos 
represented like Iran Contra and like the, <laughs> and it was like, and so I'm always fascinated, literally to this day, I've never forgotten like what Richard Slotkin, who was the name of the professor, had said, because now I always look at the, like even a year in movies, right? And I look at them and I say, what are the trends here, right? And like, what are the trends that, that we see in what movies are being made? You know, I remember, I can't remember if it was like the year of The Revenant, it was like also the year of that All Is Lost movie with Robert Redford. And there was like another movie and they were all movies about like people, lonely people, like alone trying to survive under great odds. Like, and it was like, well, what is that saying about our society right now? Or certainly like, what does it say that over the last 11 years, right? Like Iron Man 1 came out in 2008, let's say, right? right? And that kind of like restarted the whole Marvel franchise, right? And, and this is just a theory, but like, under the same principle that, that this professor said is the GFC happened, right? We now have like watched an entire nation of like and world of bankers and like irresponsible practices dismantle the economy and nobody got taken to task. There was no justice at large. There was no justice. Nobody went to prison, right? Fines, all this stuff, but nobody literally got pulled off in handcuffs outside of maybe one guy. And, and I go, so we live in a world that has no justice. Well, what better place to show, to like have superhero movies become the most you know, popular genre of movie for the last 10 years? Because we live in a world in which I think often we don't see justice. So, what, so you, where, where do you find justice? You find justice in superhero movies, but you're not getting justice from politicians. You're not getting justice from, from you know, judges and lawyers, you're getting justice from like a literal superhero. They're the only ones who can give us justice, which isn't even realistic because they don't exist. So we've created this thing in which we now want to go see justice in movies because we're not getting it in real life. So and there are microcosms of that every year in movie making. And so what is what are movies trying to tell us about society and how are they reflecting society? And I've always believed every movie is a reflection of the director's personal point of view and they're a reflection of the society at large because I think we all make movies in the context of when they're made, you know? And so, so I'm always fascinated by that for sure.